if you clicked on this video, chances are you own a 40 series Lenovo ThinkPad that suffers from an issue called a Wi-Fi whitelist. Wi-Fi whitelist has been introduced by Lenovo to keep ThinkPad users from upgrading or replacing their Wi-Fi cards. And if you try to insert a Wi-Fi card that hasn't been officially approved by Lenovo, before unlocking the device was an esoteric knowledge, available only to a few chosen people from the internet forums. However, it's completely understandable how someone would be concerned about an internet stranger doing something mysterious to their laptop's firmware in a way that they can't understand or verify. So in this video we're going to do it ourselves, from the beginning to the end. But first, a few disclaimers. This process is quite involved and requires at the very least basic knowledge of Google and a steady hand. I provide zero warranty in case something goes wrong. This tutorial is fairly safe and if you follow the instructions carefully you should be fine. However, I take no responsibility for your laptop catching fire, refusing to boot or shrinking in size. I'll be working on Lenovo ThinkPad T440p with the BIOS version 2.52. I personally don't know whether it's going to work on other BIOS versions or other Haswell ThinkPads, however at the very least it has been reported to work on W540 and T540. The only way to know for sure is to try it yourself and if it doesn't work you can always restore your original BIOS. One more thing that I want to mention is that this process does not help to remove the supervisor or bias password, so don't even ask it in the comments. Last but not least, I want to say huge thanks to Thrimber, who developed the Wi-Fi whitelist patches and the signing utility, and also thanks to the Tony Mac x86 community. Unfortunately, I do not know where the advanced menu patch came from, so I can't credit the author. Now, with that out of the way, let's get started. Apart from the laptop itself, you will also need a second laptop or desktop PC, a CH341A external programmer with an 8-pin clip. They are usually sold together on websites like eBay, Amazon or AliExpress for about $10. I'll leave some links in the description. By the way, if you prefer to have a text version of this guide to follow, I'll also leave that down below. Before using the programmer, you also need to assemble it. Align the red wire on the clip with number 1 on the adapter, raise the lever on the programmer and plug the clip in the adapter as shown. First, we need to install three things on our second computer, flash ROM, UEFI patch and ThinkPad UEFI sign. You'll also need to download the text file with patches from the video description. On Linux, you can simply download flash ROM from your distro's repositories. On Ubuntu, the command is sudo apt install flash ROM. If you're on Mac, you'll have to install the homebrew package manager first. After that, you can install FlashRom by simply typing brew install FlashRom. On Windows, using FlashRom is somewhat complicated since you'll need a special driver that can be installed on 64-bit versions of Windows without some tinkering. You can find unofficial versions of FlashRom with the USB drivers already included on the internet, but use them at your own risk. The best option will probably be to follow this tutorial from an Ubuntu Live CD. Installing UEFI patch is easy. Simply download the right version for your operating system from the GitHub and unpack it. Remove both text files from the folder to avoid any confusion. After that, clone the UEFI sign GitHub repository or simply download the zip and unpack it into the same folder that you use for UEFI patch. Download the text file with patches from the video description, move it to the UEFI patch folder and open it with your favorite text editor. Here we're going to put a hash symbol in front of every patch that we don't want to be applied. The two bottom patches that unlock advanced memory settings are already commented out, and since I'll be doing it on a T440p, I'll also comment out the patches for T440 and L540. This patch is also going to unlock the hidden advanced settings and bias, but if you don't want that for some reason, put a hash symbol in front of the line. Save the file and quit. Turn your laptop upside down, remove the battery and take off the base cover. Take a good look at the motherboard and eventually you'll see a BIOS chip that looks kind of like that. If you're doing it on a different laptop, your BIOS chip might be at a different location and you might need to take the laptop apart completely to access it. Next, align the dimple on the top of the chip and the red wire on your programmer clip and put a clip on the chip. Be careful, anchor the clip on one side and then close it in on the other side. Look at it from all sides and make sure that the clip sits tightly on the chip. Next, we're going to plug the programmer into the second laptop and open a terminal. Go to your UEFI patch folder and type this command. As you can see, it worked for me, but if you get a no chip found error, unplug the USB programmer from the laptop and try to reset the clip on the chip. Sometimes the connection isn't strong enough and usually fiddling with the clip helps. After FlashRom has finished reading your chip, repeat the same command again, but this time replace the BIOS 1 with BIOS 2. Next, we're going to compare the two BIOS dumps to make sure they're identical. If this returns nothing, we're good to go. 
but if it says files are different, you need to unplug the USB programmer, reset the clip on the chip and try again. After that's done, you can delete the second file since both files are identical anyway. Do not delete the first file and keep it somewhere safe. This is going to be your backup in case something goes wrong. Now unplug the USB programmer so that you don't accidentally yank the clip. You can also leave the clip on the chip since we'll have to put it back in a minute anyway. Now we're going to patch the BIOS file and remove the Wi-Fi whitelist. Make sure you have the UEFI patch binary, the text file with the patches and the BIOS file in the same folder and type this command. There we go. At this point we're pretty much done, but if you try and flash the BIOS file back to the chip, this means that the BIOS is unsigned and somebody tampered with it. I wonder who that was. To avoid that, we need to sign the BIOS file, but first, Let's install Python 3 and the Pi Cryptodome package. On Mac you can do it by typing brew install Python 3. And on Linux you'll have to install Python 3 using your distros package manager. After that type pip3 install Pi Cryptodome. Next go to the folder where you unpack the UEFI patch and ThinkPad UEFI sign and type this command. And there we go, image signed. We can also verify the image by typing this command. As you can see, it says signature is correct. Now it's time to flash the model BIOS back to the laptop. Reconnect the USB programmer to your second laptop and in case you remove the clip from the chip, put it on again. The command that we need to type now is sudo flash from dash p ch 341a underscore spi dash r bios underscore patch dot img. You can see now why I don't read those commands out loud. <laughs> Wait for it to finish, unplug the USB programmer and remove the clip. Put the lid back on the laptop, slide in the battery and let's see if it works. As you can see the laptop didn't bat an eye even though we have a Dell Wi-Fi card in it and the Wi-Fi is actually working. If we take a look at the BIOS menu, we'll also see a bunch of new settings such as power limits, ACPI states and so on. Nice! nice. So that's it. If you have any questions that Google can answer, make sure to leave them down below. I would also like to thank my patrons, Kujo26, Mitchell Valentino, Ray Piria, Remus Ilyish, and everyone else who supports this channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.